Hi there, I'm Evan Cohen, Product Manager for UiPath Apps, and this is How to Build Your First App in Under 5 Minutes. For the uninitiated, UiPath Apps is a cloud-first, low-code application development platform that enables creation and sharing of enterprise-grade apps that deliver engaging experiences and faster automation. Today, I'm going to be walking you through the creation of your first app using App Studio. For this tutorial, we'll be using an app template, a sample workflow, and an entity. Now before we get started, let's take a quick look at the workflow and the entity that we'll be using in our app. This process automates data entry into a legacy financial system. It has three input arguments, price, quantity, and fees, and it takes those inputs, enters them into the legacy system, and then extracts the unique account and transaction ID associated with that order. To help modernize this experience, we're going to be using data service as our system of record, and we'll store all of our data in our trades entity, which will make it easy to search later on. If you're going to be following along, before continuing, make sure you've followed the setup instructions linked in the description. Let's get started. Now the first page that we're going to build is the new transaction page. And this page is going to capture inputs from the end user and send them to the process. And to do that, I need to build a little form. Now apps provides a bunch of really rich controls for me, but in this case, I'm just going to use three text boxes for the price, quantity, and fees for this process. I need some way to associate these text boxes with the individual process inputs. And to do that, I'm going to use their value binding and either click and drag or double click to associate these text boxes with those individual fields. I'm also going to go ahead and add a handy label so end users know which one is which. Next, I want to provide end users with a preview of what their order total is going to be. And to do that, I'm going to create an expression. Now, expressions are used to create dynamic app experiences and actually make your apps easier to build and maintain. And to start that expression, I'm going to start with equals. And I want to start my expression with a dollar sign to show the price and then concatenate that with some simple arithmetic. I'm going to multiply the price and the quantity and add the fees. Next, I need some way to actually start this process. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this submit button and go to its events. And here we can see as a part of the template, we already have the start process rule, which is asking me which process we want to start. And I will, of course, pick this one. And now I want to start thinking about how I'm going to show the results of this process to my end users. Now, I know this process returns a record ID for my trades entity. And since I want to show more than one field from this entity, I need some way to query data service for this record. Now, just like you would in Excel, I'm actually going to use a lookup function, but I'm going to do it on the data context property of this results container. And this is going to allow me to reference the fields of this entity directly on the controls within it. So I'll use my lookup function. And of course, I'm looking up the trades entity. And now I need to create a condition. So when the trades entity ID is equal to the output of my process, which is giving me my trade ID. And now we'll see that on any field and any control within this container on its value binding property, I can see this data context and I can directly use those fields. So the account ID and the created time. Now let's go ahead and run this app. And now I'm going to enter a price quantity and some fees. We can see that our total is being reflected correctly. And I'm going to start this process by clicking my submit button. Those inputs will be sent back down to that process. The process will automate entry into that legacy application. It will return my entity ID and then apps will fetch that entity from data service and render those results on the canvas. Now, the final part of this app is a transaction history view. So go ahead and submit a few more of these transactions to populate your trades entity and then exit your app preview and go back to App Studio for the final step. Back in App Studio, I'm going to set the stage for this final step by clicking and dragging the navigation page to the top of my page list. 
Now the first page in this list is going to be the first page that gets shown to your end users. And this navigation page has a menu bar to help switch between our, our new transaction and transaction history page with the aid of a page container. Now this modularity helps save time and eliminate redundant work when you're building apps. Next, let's go to the transaction history page and select the table. This is where we'll be giving end users a searchable transaction log. And just like before, we're gonna be writing an expression here. But this time, instead of using a lookup, we wanna get multiple records. So we'll use a filter. And this time, our condition will specify that the account ID contains the value that end users enter in the account ID search text box above. And now our app is finished. Let's go ahead and run it. Now we can see that navigation bar and we can also navigate easily between the new and history pages. We can see that transaction history page and we can search for the account ID. And that's it. You've just built your first UiPath app. From all of us on the UiPath apps team, we can't wait to get your feedback. And as always, we can't wait to see what you build. Thank you.